Good morning. Friday morning, and uh, we've been focusing on the Sermon on the Mount, and in particular, um, the the model of prayer that, that Jesus gives um, out of chapter 6, verses uh, 5 through 14. And uh, we're at verses 12 through 14 this week, and uh, we spent a good deal of time talking about the importance of God, uh, 11 through 14 this week, God sharing with us how to pray for our most important physical needs as well as our most important spiritual needs. We've talked about God being a God that provides according to his nature, according to his name, and how he forgives according to his nature and according to his name. We've looked at the, um, the interconnection of forgiving like God forgives uh, so that we can embrace all of the beauty and the significance of forgiveness as well as practicing forgiveness in our own relationships. So we forgive like God forgives as we ask for God to forgive us. And um, how does he do that? According to the text, he releases us. Uh, so we ought to release those that are in debt to us. He relieves us. So we ought to relieve those that are in debt um, to us. And he, he, he is relational. So we ought to be intentional on fostering those relationships. But today I want to challenge you with another dimension. A very important part of uh, seeing the economy of forgiveness, especially when you pray, is to have the sensibility to recognize that a God so awesome, your Father who is in heaven, who does no wrong, who provides for you everything that you need, who honors you with more than you are deserving of, more than I am deserving of. When I when I think about that, when I think about how awesome God is, and I think about how good God is, and I think about how important God is to my own relationship, one of the things that drives me to doing is my awareness of the nature and the goodness of God really brings me to a point where I am completely aware of how wretched I am. I really want you to tune in right here. When you can see how good your God is and you acknowledge how awesome he is and you see him in all of his glory and all of his love and all of his tenderness, even how God is so, so important and uh, so, so Im impressive in the way that through the Holy Spirit, he nudges you and I to be aware of what he wants and to help and assist us in doing that. When you get a chance later on today, here's your first meditation text. Go back to Ezekiel chapter 36. I didn't give this to you yesterday because I really wanted to share it with you today. But go back to Ezekiel 36. Spend some time looking at 21 through 27. Then look at John chapter 14, chapter 15, chapter 16. Just spend some time reading through those. And Romans chapter 8, and Romans chapter 12. I know it sounds like a lot of reading, but I promise you it will be a blessing. And in those passages, take some time and just see how God, the spirit is utilized in our life to nudge us closer to, to not only realizing what God wants, but assisting us in doing what he wants. Now, this is why this is important. When you can see how awesome your God is, it will drive you to a place where you are constantly wanting to turn your heart and your mind back to him. My love for my God and my desire to please my God comes primarily out of the fact that he's done so much for me. He's done so much for me that it doesn't make sense. He's good to me. He loves me. He gives me more than I deserve. He gives me grace beyond measure. He gives me mercy. He gives me favor. God blesses me to have opportunities that, that just don't make sense. And when I'm in a position where I have failed him, I'm driven to turn back to the same God that I know can bless me. Here's your, here's your nugget for today. When you pray and when you ask for forgiveness and when you practice being forgiven or practice being a forgiving individual, Learn how to do so with a pentative, with a pentative spirit. Learn how to embrace the notion and the teaching of repentance. When you know how good God is, you should have no problem turning to him. 
When you know how awesome God is, you should have no problem turning to him, changing your mind about where you are to where you need to be ought to be a, a byproduct of the blessings and the benevolence of your God. I think about repentance throughout the book of uh, throughout the scripture and I, a number of books come to mind in particular, though, just for today. Think about Luke chapter 15. And I know, you know, the discussion of the wasteful son, the study of the son that 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 the thought that he couldn't he could make it without his father. He thought that he could do what he did without God. He wanted the provisions of God, but he didn't want the person of God. And here's the lesson. Provisions run out. After a while, money is not enough. After a while, pleasure is not enough. After a while, people around you are not enough. But never be so arrogant as to think the provisions without the person that blesses you are enough to satisfy you. Just like that prodigal son, he found himself in a hog pen in a position where he wasn't even designed to be. And it was there that he had an, uh, an awakening that said, I need to go back to my father's house. That's the person. When God allows life to press you, have enough sense to change your mind about where you are and go back to the person. Watch the point though. Repentance is a natural part of why the prodigal son went back because God is waiting and God is welcoming those that come to him. Acts chapter two, repentance is described. You remember after Jesus has talked about and he's, he's, he's taught to be the Messiah, the Lord and Christ. They asked, they cried out at verse 37, what do we do? What did Peter tell them to do? Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ. For what, Peter? For the forgiveness of your sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promises to you and to all your children and all that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. Acts chapter 3, the same lesson is being taught. Repent, and verse number 19, repent. And the for the times of restitution are at hand. God, God wants to renew and make you, make you and I better. In Acts chapter five, verse thirty through thirty-two, the same, the same teaching is taught there. God exalted him, talking about Jesus, to his own right hand as prince and savior, that he might bring Israel to repentance and forgive their sins. God wants us to repent. He desires for us to have a mentality to repent. And here's the, here's the awesome part. He promises to renew you. He promises to forgive you. Three things as you meditate on today and as you pray on today and as you accept this challenge of being an individual who forgives with the, with the, uh, with the importance of repentance. Number one, learn how to adjust your mental position. That's changing your mind. Learn how to be someone who's willing and open to repent. Don't be arrogant. Don't think that you have no need to repent. No, have the opposite idea. You know what, Lord? I, I know that I've sinned and I know these are the sins that I have sinned, but there may very well be some things that I have and that I have no idea that I did. I may have offended someone. I may have, I may have shorted you. I may not be doing all that you called me to do and I repent. I have a mentality that's willing to change to do what you want me to do. That's number one. Number two, not only do you need to adjust your mental position, but you need to have acknowledgement of Messiah's propitiation. Remember that not only do you change your mind, but you confess the ability of Jesus to be enough to, to take care of whatever is between you and God. And then number three, accept the master's promises. Watch what God promises. Back to the top for our study this week. He promises to release you. He promises to relieve you. He promises to reestablish your relationship and he promises to renew your spirit. What does that mean for me? That means that if I'm going to practice being an individual who forgives like God forgives, I need to have a heart that's willing to repent. I'm challenging you today. Spend some time today in your private time thinking about all the ways that God has blessed you. Learn how to have a heart that repents and turns to him, accepting the blessings of God and being willing to accept others as you forgive them. I pray that this has been a challenge for you. I pray that you're getting closer to God. 
And I'm going to also ask that you pray for me. I'm going to pray for you. Let's watch God change us, and let's watch him change everything around us. God bless you. Have a great, great Friday.